this video is going to be the first in a series I'm going to be calling Destiny Anime Builds. I'm going to utilize every in game to make you look and feel like a specific anime character. Let me take you back. So during Season of the Haunted, we got an update to the Solar subclass called Solar 3.0, which added in our aspects and fragments. But with the Warlock specifically, we got a new melee called Incinerator Snap, which coincidentally looks exactly like Roy Mustang's Fire Alchemy from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So in today's video, that is the build we're going to be making. Let's just dive right into it. So the exact we're going to be using is the Claws of Ahamkar. It's perk, the Whispers. Gain an additional melee charge. Essentially, we're going to get two incinerator snaps that we can use back to back. Next, let's go over probably the most important part of a build. Fashion. Obviously, we have to make ourselves look like Roy Mustang the best. Now, if you notice something in here that you would like better, a shader, an ornament, whatever, something that you found to be a little more look-alike definitely put that in the comments because i'm definitely going to be looking at it because i tested so many ornaments and shaders that this is just what i came down to at the end of the day so for our helmet here shader wise we're going with bitter pearl and deluxe crown honestly i just wanted something minimalistic and white to match the gloves aka clausal hamkara and i'm using the honors of the nine now if you notice in Roy Mustang's drip in general, he has white gloves and then, you know, the jacket. Unfortunately, the Claws of Hamkar go all the way up the forearm. And I wish there was a shader where it was the white on the hand part and then made the feathers like navy blue. But I just couldn't find a shader that made it look like that. I went through every single one of them. Just couldn't do it. So this is the best one that I found. Next for the chest piece, I'm going with the gold J shader from the dawning events and then the inspector's robes here. Again, if you notice, he kind of has robes on pretty much. And this is honestly one of the most minimalistic robes and it has the gold oh, accents, you know, for any of the military stuff there. So I thought that fit pretty well. The only thing that kind of throws it off is this, you know, gray part. But honestly, I didn't think that was a big deal, in my opinion. Next up for the boost, I'm using the same shader, the gold J, but I'm using the Courtier high tops. I appreciate sure how you say that. If I butchered that, let me know. I went to public school, so don't roast me too bad. But I feel like these boots pretty much match it up almost perfectly. They could be a little higher, but honestly, these are the only boots that actually look like real boots <laughs> in the game. So I thought this would fit. And then obviously for the class armor, you do not need a shader for this, but the Dawn Singer Bond. This thing is just fire, literally. <laughs> so I thought this fit the build perfectly. Now that that's out of the way, let's go for what I'm using for everything else to make the build work. So under our Dawn Class Solar Super for our super, I'm going with the Daybreak over Well of Radiance because I feel like, you know, Roy Mustang's a little more aggressive uh, with the Daybreak and I would rather have the sword throwing the swords than sitting in my well. I just feel like it's more fitting. For our abilities, we're going with Phoenix Dive. Pretty much you will dive to the ground and cure you and nearby allies with Solar Light. And when you have Heat Rises active, you gain restoration while diving and scorch targets upon landing. And again, heat rises is an aspect we're going to be utilizing, which is going to allow us to fire weapons, melee, and throw grenades while gliding. If you consume your grenade, that's how you activate heat rises. And final blows while airborne increase the duration of heat rises and grant melee energy. Again, we're going to want that melee a lot, so we are going to be utilizing in air stuff. And with the Phoenix Dive, just adding restoration or more healing, and then also scorch for the potential uh, for more scorch stacks to allow ignitions. That's going to be really good. For our movement, I'm going Burst Glide, but someone roasted me in the comments last time because they're like, if you're going to use Heat Rises, use Strafe Glide. <clears throat> use Strafe Glide. Use Balance Glide. I could care less what you do, but again, just use what you want here. For the melee, we obviously are going to go with Incinerator Snap, like we mentioned. Again, snap your fingers to create a fan of burning sparks that explode and scorch targets. Again, Scorch is the solar light that does damage over time, and once you get enough Scorch stacks up, it'll cause an ignition. Again, blowing stuff up, I feel like is pretty on par <laughs> for Roy Mustang. So again, once an ignition happens, that also can stun Unstoppable Champions, so keep that in mind. Now, for our grenade, we definitely have a couple of options here throughout all these. If you want to be like, quote-unquote, cannon, you could do Incinerary Grenade and take off Touch of Flame and put on Icarus Dash so you get that mid-air dodge. But honestly, I like Touch of Flame with either the Fireball Grenade, the Solar Grenade, or the Fusion Grenade. Pretty much, Touch of Flame is going to get bonuses to those grenades. Pretty much the Solar Grenade, when you throw it, it does, you know, it's damage in a circle, causes damage over time. But with this, it increases the linger duration and periodically emits blobs of lava around its perimeter, which can cause Scorch and Ignitions, by the way. With the Fireball Grenade, again, you throw it, it hits a couple targets. But with this, it increases the target search radius and maximum target count. And then with the Fusion Grenade, again, that's just a sticky grenade, sticks to a target, explodes. With this, it explodes twice, spreading more Scorch and has more potential to cause Ignitions as well. Now for our Fragments. First up, highly recommend Ember of Ashes. You apply more Scorch stacks to targets. Again, the more Scorch stacks we can apply, the 
more of a chance we have to cause an ignition. Next, Ember of Searing. Defeating Scorched targets grants melee energy and creates a Fire Sprite plus 10 to recovery. Fire Sprite is pretty much a luminous concentration of solar energy. When picked up, Fire Sprites grant grenade energy. So again, we're getting bonuses to our melee energy and our grenade energy just with this solar fragment. Next, Ember of Singeing. Your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets, pretty much allowing us to have that Phoenix dive more often so we can cure ourselves more and also scorch targets on landing. Now for the last fragment, just for fun, I like Ember of Char. Your solar ignition spreads scorch to affect the targets plus 10 to discipline. So whenever you cause an ignition, it also causes scorch, which again can just keep rolling into more damage over time more ignitions, etc, etc. But if you did want to change this one out, I would recommend something like Ember of Torches. Power melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant. It's a minus 10 to discipline, but radiant gives you bonus damage for weapons and also allows your weapons to pop anti-barrier champions as long as they don't already have a champion mod attached to them. Next, let's talk about some artifact perks that we could take advantage of during Season of Defiance. If you're watching this part of the video and it's not Season of Defiance, go ahead and skip over it and move on to the next chapter. And if something happens in the future with a different season, we get cool, you know, solar artifact perks that we can take advantage of. Definitely going to be revisiting this video and making an updated Roy Mustang video. But for this season, there are a couple things that we can take advantage of. First up being Solar Surge. Again, collecting a Fire Sprite gives you an armor charge. Next up, we can take advantage of Flare Up. Fireball Grenades apply more Scorch stacks, aka we can cause ignitions easier. And damaging a combatant with a Fireball Grenade spawns a Fire Sprite near them. So again, we can take advantage of that even more. And then Rain of Firebolts, when you have Fireball Grenades equipped, gain a second grenade charge. So not only do you have two melees, but you also have two grenades now. Now for armor mods here on the helmet, I'm rocking double hands-on. Again, gain bonus super energy on melee kills. Unfortunately, having Ashes of Assets and hands-on on doesn't work anymore. It doesn't stack like that, but you can double up on them. So that's why we're doing double hands-on. And then I'm also rocking Solar Siphon. Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows create an orb of power. On our gauntlets here, I'm rocking Heavy Handed. Your powered melee final blows create orbs of power. And then I'm rocking Impact Induction and Momentum Transfer. Essentially causing damage with my grenade or my melee gives me a cooldown to my melee and my grenade. So anytime I use any of those abilities, it pretty much is a cycle with each other and allows those to cool down faster. For a chest piece here, you can honestly rock any combination of resistance and reserve mods to be honest if you want to rock all resistance mods all reserve mods go for it just make sure that it's something that works for you next up for my boots i'm going with solar weapon surge again your solar weapons gain a small bonus to damage while you have any armor charge your armor charge now decays over time essentially you get an armor charge when you collect an orb of power and with any of these blue mods it actually lasts 10 seconds so we can have that bonus solar weapon damage for 10 seconds you can have a max stack Base-wise, up to three armor charges, so if we collect three orbs of power, we can have 30 seconds of solar weapon damage if we don't pick up an orb of power within that time, which again, it's kind of highly unlikely, but still, keep that in mind. Next up, I'm rocking double invigoration. Again, reduces melee cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power. We want our melee back as quickly as possible. And then lastly, for my class item, I'm rocking double outreach, reduces melee cooldown when using your class ability, and then Reaper. After using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power. Now for stats to focus on, first up, always talk about this in general, try to have tier 10 resilience, 100 resilience, 30% damage reduction in PvE. Absolutely disgusting, something that you definitely want. Now next up, there are a couple things that we can focus on. First up being strength. Strength is tied to your melee, and again, the faster we can get our melee, the faster you can keep snapping your fingers like Roy Mustang. Secondly, I would look into Discipline. Discipline is tied to a grenade, and again, grenades are kind of a part of this build in the fact of scorching and igniting and allowing us to have our abilities back even faster when creating fire sprites, all this other stuff. And then lastly, I'd look into Recovery. Now, the reason is, is because Recovery is actually tied to our class ability. It's going to be tied to that Phoenix Dive, which means the higher our Recovery, the faster we can get that Phoenix Dive back to, you know, go down, get healing, cause Scorch, all that great jazz. Now for weapon options, I definitely focus on weapons that can cause Scorch and Ignition. So if you've done the Root of Nightmares raid, you know the exotic that we get is called Conditional Finality. This shotgun, I didn't think it was going to be that great initially when it came out, but I freaking love this thing. This thing is the unstoppable champion destroyer number one, but also it's intrinsic trait, split decision, dual barrel split into stasis and solar damage. Then we have this other perk, short and barrel, alley magazine, and then textured grip. But this one's important, paracausal pellets. Landing nearly all stasis pellets will freeze targets. That's cool and all, but the second portion is the one we want to take advantage of for the solar build is landing nearly all solar pellets will ignite targets. Again, more explosions here. For our energy weapon, you definitely want something that comes with the perk incandescent. And again, this is my callous mini tool. This is an 
uh, upgraded one, it's a crafted one, it has the en enhanced incandescent, but defeating a target spreads Scorch to those nearby, and then more powerful combatants and opposing guardians cause Scorch in a larger radius. Essentially, the more Scorch we can cause, the more stuff that we can take advantage of on the subclass. Essentially, this build gives you a couple things. First up, allowing for a very fast melee cooldown and pretty much allowing you to constantly use your melee ability on top of fast ability cooldown for both your Phoenix Dive and your grenade as well. Plus, bonus weapon damage just as almost like a passive uh, whenever you pick up an orb of power from either getting a kill with your solar weapons, your melee, or getting a kill with a weapon after you use the Phoenix Dive. And then with everything else on your armor mods, again, double hands-on, allowing for, you know, a faster super from melee kills, uh, you know, double invigoration, picking up orbs of power gives you melee, and then outreach, again, using that Phoenix Dive is going to give you your melee back even faster. Essentially, everything here is catered around you to be able to use any all of your abilities to cause Scourge, Ignitions, just blow everything up on the battlefield. I'm going to leave some highlights here at the end, but in closing, this is my Roy Mustang Solar Warlock build. I hope you guys liked it. I'm going to pin the dim link at the top of the comments here so you can use exactly what I'm using down to subclass abilities, aspects, fragments, uh, armor mods, and fashion. Yes, you can copy the fashion, so that's going to be a really big portion here. If you have any suggestions, leave those in the comments as well. I'm definitely willing to hear you out, especially in regards to the fashion portion, because there's a million things when, in regards to transmog with this game, so I'm definitely willing to hear you out. But if you like what you saw, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then turn the bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on another build video here on the channel. If you didn't know, we actually stream three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Again, we're either going to be streaming on YouTube or Kick. If you want to stay updated where I am going to be streaming, I always tweet it out on Twitter at It's Dave TV, and I'll also be in my Discord as well. Again, that link will also be in the description. That's where we're going to be talking in regards to raids, dungeon, PvP, or just hanging out in the Discord. And we also have other games topics in there as well obviously but also we have pc tech anime and other things as well lastly if you didn't know we had youtube partner here on the channel which is just freaking awesome it's given us access to a lot of cool benefits one of those things being memberships if you don't know what a membership is it is essentially like a twitch subscription again it's just another way to support me here on the channel so i could continue making this content for you guys again if you would like some more information all you have to do is press the join button next subscribe and that will give you a rundown with all the details you need including emotes monthly badges and other exclusive things here on the channel all right ladies and gentlemen it's been your boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Choo!